Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I'm your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show every week as we are doing today. And um, the archive shows are available on our archive page here, and I'll show you more about navigating that later. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch, so please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. For those of you not from Nebraska, um, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries. Um, in your state, we may be just called the whatever state library. So we provide services and training, consultation, et cetera, et cetera, to all types of libraries across the state. So you will find um, show uh, episodes on our show um, for all types of libraries, uh, public, K-12, academic, corrections, museums, archives, um, all across the board. Uh, so um, really our only criteria here on Encompass Live is that it's something to do with libraries, something libraries are doing, something cool that we think they could be doing, uh, services and products and programs and all sorts of things we think they could be involved in. We sometimes have Nebraska Library Commission staff come on the show and talk about things we're doing here through the commission, but we also bring in guest speakers from um, across Nebraska and across the country, um, anywhere we can get them from. And today that's what we have with us is um, guest speakers from here in Nebraska. With us this morning is um, Matt Mason. Good morning, Matt. Good morning. Our current Nebraska State poet, yay. Um, are you in year two or three now of that? I can't. Um, I just started <laughs> the third year, though it feels like about the 20th, uh, given the past uh, 11, 12 months. So that, exactly. Yep, yeah. yep. I feel you. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and uh, Gina Tranisi, who is um, from the Nebraska Writers Collective, and actually both Matt and Gina are from the Nebraska Writers Collective. Good morning, Gina. Good morning. Um, executive director and program director from there. And uh, I reached out to um, Matt and Gina to talk to us today about um, what the British po um, Collective is doing um, this year for, in, for poets. Uh, April is National Poetry Month, so that's coming up. So um, good time now to think about planning what you might do at your library for that if you already have projects or programs or things planned for that um, or um, this might give you some ideas of things to become involved in um, in April um, or in throughout the whole spring actually uh, so let's uh, get into um, the writers collective you guys are talking about do you want to start on the website you want to want to you talk about about what the Nebraska writers collective is and what you guys do there whatever you want yeah. to how you want to share about the group sure well I'll, I'll start um the nebraska writers collective is a nonprofit, and we um really work on community building uh, through creative writing and performance poetry largely um we have programs in uh, high schools middle schools correctional facilities uh, and also do um, other presentations for community groups or libraries or whoever. Um, but we are largely poets and, um, uh, you know, some fiction writers, play writers, and others uh, who work with us too. Um, and just, uh, I think the, the biggest joy is working, you know, our biggest program is Louder Than a Bomb, which works with students. Um, and it is fantastic to work with them through the whole school year and then typically in the spring we've got kind of the icing on the cake of uh, these students who've learned how to you know they've learned about poetry of course but i think essentially they've learned how to communicate their stories talk about what's important to them in an effective way and have an audience for it um mm -hmm. And so we've struggled this year to figure out the best way to find, uh, to make sure that they still have an audience. We're, we're grateful to have still been working with them in the schools, mm -hmm. virtually, largely. Um, but Gina, what have I left out? 
You haven't left out much at all. Um, it's been a really tough year, um, but we've been excited to, yeah, make that virtual move and kind of replace the Louder Than a Bomb contest with three different programs that we'll, you know, talk through a little bit later on. Um, Matt and I were talking just briefly kind of about our origin story of meeting. Um, I'm a former Louder Than a Bomb student, so I was in the first cohort of um, this program. Um, and that's really what sort of sparked my interest in poetry long term, which has become a kind of career. Um, who knew? So that's really how we got started was um, I was 16 and a student performing on stage, just like y'all can see on your screens here. And um, it grew into this position, which I'm, I'm hugely grateful for. So. Um, Matt, do you want to run through some of these programs? Yeah, um, wh what we're doing this year is um, with, if you go to our website, anywriters.org, um, under the programs tab, you'll see we've got um, the Nebraska YPL, the 2020 anthology contest, uh, or 2021, tw and the video contest. So these are the three ways we kind of, since it's not safe, right now to do an in-person loud festival with people cramped tight and yelling uh, which is what louder than a bomb typically is um we were we found these three ways to uh, kind of uh do something a little different but still get the students um to have their work seen read heard um so we're excited the closest probably to the festival is the video contest where students will be submitting videos um, and they will be judged by panels of experts uh, with uh, awards given, trophies and plaques and Pop-Tarts. Typically, at the end of Louder Than a Bomb, we have a large trophy on stage crammed with Pop-Tarts. Um, <laughs> Wait, why, not? why? Why Pop-Tarts? I love Pop-Tarts. Because <laughs> they're fun. Uh, yeah, there's no sponsorship. Is there a story or history behind that specifically, or is it totally random? <laughs> It, it's all just my own personal thing for years you know when uh when i was in college i would have pop tarts and orange juice parties and have people over um and then i ran a, a an open mic poetry and music night for years at a place called stage right coffee uh, in downtown omaha where i would give out pop tarts for prizes so <laughs> why not we had trophies and they looked, you know, they looked good, but, you know, kind of it's nice to have something bursting out of the trophy. <laughs> when Matt hired me, I think one of the first things I said was, okay, I am determined to do one thing in my career here at the Nebraska Writers Collective, which is to get Pop-Tarts sponsored by Kellogg's for these prizes. <laughs> I have not succeeded yet, so if anybody so has a contact, <laughs> yes. if anyone has a contact at Kellogg's, Look us up. <laughs> <That is so. laughs> um, yeah, so so the uh, so the video contest we're excited about. Um, students will be submitting videos. There will be um, both the standard awards judged by the panel of experts, and some awards. It'll be viewers' choice awards through our um, our website and oh. our YouTube channel, um, so people can see the students' poems and vote on them. Um, and then from there, uh, there will be an award ceremony on April 15th at seven o'clock at night. It'll be available online. Um, you can sign up for it if you go to um, LTAB, uh, tinyurl.com slash LTAB 2021 events. Um, that'll take you to the registration page for all of our spring award ceremonies. Um, Wait, so again, there's tinyurl.com tinyurl.com slash ltab ltab 2021 um, events all one word of course i did it right you're on it and it'll take you straight to the google form where you can sign up so there's the april 15th where you can see the winners of the video contest and our second contest which is a written poetry contest mm -hmm. In past years, we put out an anthology every year, and this year we're, you know, because of everything going on, we're amping up some prizes, we're giving cash prizes for written poetry, um, as well as trophies um, to student writers. 
Um, and so the w the top five will be announced at that uh, event on April 15th also. Um, so yeah, so we're excited. I mean, that alone, I think, is kind of a cool, it's not quite the live festival, um, but it is still, you know, something I'm pretty happy with uh, to put together and showcase these students because um, they've been working all year in the classroom. Um, we're so happy to have kept working with them, especially through something like this, where I think creative writing helps you process the world. And man, there's a lot of world to process this school year. Um, but then, uh, but wait, there's more. Um, Gina had the fantastic idea about a little, I think a little more than a year ago, um to it's like you know there are other cities and states who have a youth poet laureate program um it's largely run by a group called urban word in new york and um she was like can we do something like this and we're like yeah, we could probably figure something out and you know we're figuring this out we get in their system and then of course everything blows up you know amanda gorman a previous Youth Poet Laureate, National Youth Poet Laureate, who's through this same system that Urban Word has put together. You know, she speaks at the inauguration, she's speaking before the Super Bowl, uh, and is just a brilliant example of the youth poets that we've been seeing for, for 10 years. Um, we've seen these you know, high school students, junior high students who, you know, they think, oh yes, they're gonna have poems. And they go up in front of a crowd and stun people um, with how poised they can be, how smart they are, um, just the way they put the words together to say what's important to them, making things that we didn't even understand were maybe issues to us come to life. And it's like, I've learned so much through these students because they've been putting uh putting their stories into poem form ever since you know ever since this started um this would be the 10 this is the 10 year anniversary or the 10th louder than a bomb season that we've had so we're excited to have you know we would have done something a little different anyway uh, but we're doing something a lot different due to the circumstances and i'm just you know so proud of gina and all her great ideas and everybody on our team our teaching artists we employ about you know, more than 50 poets um we don't have a lot of volunteer effort because it's important to sustain artists in our communities and so we're just so grateful to have been able to continue doing our work um through uh, our our traditional funders and cares act funding we've been able to keep it keep it all going mm -hmm. so but gina tell us more about the youth poet laureate program i mean this is really your thing um that you put together for us i mean i think you gave a really great segue into that that team conversation um because it is so much more than just the two humans that you see on the screen um it's just this network of support so we have to kind of give a shout out this website design is from our new communications director Celine haynes matt and i together could not have made this as beautiful as it is um, Regan Myers is the core teaching artist who is running the video contest. Um, she's a former or current employee um, of Button Poetry and has experience with filming. Um, and then some of those judges in that, um, the stages of, of judging that video contest are former LTAB students, they're LTAB alum. Um, so being able to go back and get those poets from some of the earliest years to then judge this current competition, um, including Charlie Curtis Beard, who's got this incredible um, career out of LA now as a musician, transitioning kind of writing from the stage into music. Um, and then to have that contest finally um, judged at the topmost level by the Button Poetry CEO. Like this is a network of people who love poetry. Um, so I really can't emphasize enough that it's, it's not just Matt, it's not just me. Uh, it's a ton of poets in Nebraska really trying to make uh, Nebraska the, the arts hub that it deserves to be, truly. Um, so, I think that's the part that I love about this, the Raiders Collective and these things you're doing that, just like yourself, Gina, that it, they don't just, the, the teens just don't go through the program and then go on, they come back. And there's it's such a great program that, and everything that you're doing there that they want to help keep it going for the next generation and for the next group that's gonna come through. And that's just a, um, you know, obvious, you know, shows the success of the program. And uh, congratulations on 10 years, sorry that it's this year, but. <laughs> um, 
and keep it going. Works. And I think you know, doing the the event online, the um, the award, the what you're going to do, the announcements and whatnot. I think at this point is probably a good time for you guys to do this because over the last year, people have gotten used to this. I think it's kind of like, oh, when's the virtual thing going to be? Great, we'll be there. So um, other people have, have forged and figured it all out. So now you guys are just like, we got this too. <laughs> we'll be there. We'll do it no matter what. We have everyone has these resources online now that we can still get together and, and, and talk about things and um, attend these events. It's true. It's so true. We're lucky. You know, this could have happened, I guess, last year in the spring. And, and I, I didn't know how to use Zoom at that point. So we're scrambling. Yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> Here we are today. Lots of growth. Lots of personal growth. So yeah, so the Youth Poet Laureate program, um, so when things really shut down um, after Matt and I finished like our crying stage and sort of like, how are we going to do this? All we do is bring youth together and they like scream and say poems and high five and hug, like everything we do in direct opposition to coronavirus safety protocols. Um, he was like, let's go online. Let's, we're going to figure it out. And so we started booking artists from across the country, um, which was another really neat, you know, pro um, to this experience. Um, and so we would get writers from the coasts, from the Midwest, and they would zoom in and give workshops and presentations. Um, and so as that had some success over the summer months, um, one of the people I thought about booking for the fall was a youth poet laureate. Um, somebody who would really be connected to our young people. Um, and so I reached out to Urban Word and said, you know, can we get in touch with Mira Descupta, the Youth Poet Laureate of New York City? Um, and they said, yeah, of course. And, and in that conversation of booking this poet, um, they said, by the way, we notice you're in Nebraska and our program doesn't exist where you are. Um, let's meet, like, let's talk about that. Let's change that. And so that's the genesis of this. Yeah. It's, serendipity and I just I have said it before and I'll say it again reach out to poets like mm -hmm. there are connections that can be forged that just go in some really beautiful directions and this is this is one of them um, like, it, it just if you don't start the conversation you never know what could come of it yeah and I, I mean I have no intention going into that to say I wish I could say I had the idea to start the youth poet laureate program in I did not you know <laughs> Um, I wanted to book an artist and support poetry and get somebody who was going to be a great representative for our young people. That was it. Um, and from that, this has just bloomed totally. Um, so for folks who are watching who are connected to young people, we are looking for the Nebraska Youth Poet Laureate. They are going to be between the ages of 13 and 19. Um, yeah, here's the info down here, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, living in Nebraska. And um, they're going to submit an application. It's just over an email. It's five poems in a poetry portfolio, a resume, and an essay of no more than 500 words about the theme of community. Um, how do you care for and in what ways do you show commitment to your community? Um, so we've said a lot, we want this person to be a, a good poet, um, but we want them to be a good human. And we hope that that good poetry informs the good humanity and vice versa. Um, because this is a young leader. This is a person that we're looking to to help elevate their voice across the state of Nebraska. Um, part of their, their prize winning is this $2,000 budget to build a community engagement project of their choice. Um, so youth poets in the past have been visual artists and poets. So they've done mural projects. Um, some of them are climate change activists and really concerned with the environment. And so they do um, large scale recycling projects. We don't know what our youth poet is going to do, um, but I'm, I'm super pumped to find out. So um, to help with that, we're going to match them with mentors. So once we know who that human is um, and they say, hey, I'm, I'm really into animal rights. OK, great. Well, then it's our job to find a mentor that's going to be a good match for them um, so that we're not pairing them with somebody who like has never looked at an animal. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we want this person to have a lot of support, especially as the, the first in this position. Yeah. And the mentors and everything would all be um, local as well. Nebraska, I assume. That's the plan. Yeah. yeah. And there's the prizes. Mm -hmm. Those are the prizes. Always pop tarts. <laughs> So yeah, and public readings, this is the other portion. Um, we don't know if this is gonna be virtual or physical, um, mm -hmm. but some other Youth Poet Laureate programs have partnered with library systems and have done public library tours, you know, across the state, across the county, the city. 
Um, so that's another option too for um, folks who are in libraries who know young people, amazing, please send them to us. And also folks who are in libraries who say, um, this is the system we have for virtual readings, we'd love to connect. This is the system we have for when it is safe to do in-person readings, fantastic, we'd love to connect with you too. Um, that's you know, really what we're looking for is, is help getting the word out um, and then, then hosting these young people. And this is something that libraries have um, um, perfected over the past year, and some were even doing it beforehand, but even more so of uh, doing their virtual story times and um, events, because, you know, having in-person events is a big thing for libraries, having everyone, um, all the kids come into the library, everyone comes into the meeting room or the um, auditorium, whatever, and they do their um, summer reading or the story time or bring in the snake handle or the show it off to the kids, that kind of thing. But they figured out how to do this all virtually, either with Zoom or Facebook Live or whatever they're using themselves. So, um, yeah, they are great to um, partner with, I think, to, to um, get these public performances done. And also, last year in the summer, when the weather got better, all right, well, today might be a good day now that we've got 60 degrees, but not during a, a polar vortex, a lot of, um, they, they moved a lot of programming outdoors. So, um, anything that would normally say just come into the library for they said let's just go out to the park or the library has a garden next to it conveniently let's just do everything there so they've kind of figured out all the logistics of that as well so i think they would be great to um you know i encourage libraries to reach out to uh the writers collective and say hey we want to get involved in this when do we do it how do we how do we pull this off and uh get our poet laureate our youth poet laureate on the road <laughs> The deadline is March 26th, um, and this is the first Youth Poet Laureate, um, but not the last. Um, so what's going to be cool from this, too, is that there's going to be another network of young humans um, who we hope that this YPL will then lead um, future YPLs and sort of create this cohort or this community of poet leaders in the state um, to get them involved in ways that are artistic, of course, and also civic. Um, but getting young people really on the map for um, the things that they're doing in and with and for their communities. Mm -hmm. So I see you had some events here that you had already done um, about how to do your applications. Were these, um, I assume these were online? Those were online. Yep, those were virtual events. Is there recordings of them somewhere that someone could look at or? People can request uh, from us. There is a link to a recording. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah, so if you need more information about um, that you want to share with any of the teens in your community. Yeah. And then I should note the, the deadline for Youth Poet Laureate, as Gina said, is March 26th. For the other two contests, we're taking submissions now through March 15th. So it's a, a shorter window for the anthology and the video contests. Oh, yeah. So. yeah. Um, let's see, does anybody have any, um, before, because I want to talk about those programs as well. Does anybody have any questions about the Youth Poet Laureate, about bringing that into your libraries? Go ahead and type in the questions section. Um, I, I was, like everyone, stunned by Amanda at the inauguration. Um, and then, of course, I've now followed her everywhere and anywhere. <laughs> and um, watch the Super Bowl because she was there. And when I heard about this coming to Nebraska, I'm like, that's perfect. This is great. I can't wait to see who it is and how this program grows. I mean, we've always we've got our state poet, like you, Matt, that is, um, has been a regular thing. And I think it's great that we finally get into doing um, one for the youth as well. Because, I mean, louder than a bomb, I've known about that for years. So we already knew we had this uh, base of um, lots of people doing poetry, youth, in, in this in the um, state and I think this is even though Gina said you didn't have the idea uh, they gave you the idea urban word that I think it's a national nat natural growth from that yeah definitely um just I mean with with the talent we see because you know how I mean everybody knows the the uh stereotype of a youth poet is you know someone kind of badly rhyming about how their heart is broken um, and then you see <laughs> these students in action that we've seen for the past 10 years and um, it's brilliant. I mean, it's hard. I mean, you know, I'm the, I'm the state poet um, and, you know, I'm someone with books out and I'm sitting there in the audience sometimes just going, that poem is better than anything I've written in the last year <laughs> <laughs> you know, by a ninth grader. So 
it's it's great to see the i mean the talent just in nebraska is is through the roof um and that's something i've known by traveling the state but really seeing it this way um so let's talk about some of the other um programs the um these, uh, both of these have the same deadline, the anthology and the video contest? Yes, both of okay. them through March 15th. So um, talk a little bit about the anthology here, the collection that's being put together. Now, is this something that is usually done every year? We normally do an anthology. Um, <laughs> and so we'll put together a book of student poems. We've done it for the past five years. And um, this year's is awesome. Uh, <laughs> And just getting it put together um, and, and out to everybody. And it's, you know, it's a great way for students to, to get their work in print and uh, for us to share it. Um, this year we're adding prizes because uh, in past years we haven't had like editor's choice first place or anything like that. But uh, this year we are, um, we've got um, a panel of judges uh, looking through all the submissions and selecting what makes it into the book itself and then from those poems I'll go in and select a first second third fourth and fifth place um, and they all get cash prizes and trophies or plaques so yeah with pop tarts um, but it's fun it, I, I love uh, this anthology every year and um, being able to put it out and get it into student hands is, is really fantastic. So and then this one I see unlike the the, the youth poet laureate um, this is just a single poem that they yes. from submit so I just pick your best or write what you think might be your best poem. That's it it's it's geared toward it's open to everybody but it's geared towards the students we're working with in the louder than a bomb programs where they typically are working on you know over the school year they work on several poems and they'll usually hone in on one or two that they really edit and get just right by the end of the school year um, for the performance and here it's uh, for the anthology or also could use the same poem for their video for the video contest sure so then here's where you can uh, submit oh and then there's the prizes that are going to be available this time yes yes yeah we're, we're happy uh, the prizes and the fact that this anthology exists is actually because of one of our former teachers uh, and their family the somer family Mm -hmm. um, Kate Somer um, taught at Duchenne um, and was, you know, instrumental in the start of Louder Than a Bomb uh, with Duchenne and uh, she unfortunately passed away a few years ago and the family has kind of uh, helped support her legacy as uh, um, making a donation to Louder Than a Bomb every year that supported the anthology specifically because she was such a, a champion of writing. So. I think this is a great um, thing too for teens to um, actually be published as a teen. Yeah. You know, that's that's a huge, that's a big deal. <laughs> Just to that's be, it. You know, they can say, "Look, yeah, this, I mean, this the, actual book." This, exactly, and I, I think the students do so much for us, and we really want to give back by finding things that'll look good on a college, you know, application. You know, I was published here, or. I was uh, on the poetry team here or, you know, different things like that. Absolutely. So I noticed this one that um, I think it's the same as 19 years is your cutoff for everything. Yes. Oldest. Okay. Yeah. How, how young, what's the, somebody wants to know, what is the youngest age of, is there any cutoff for there or I know they have to be able to write, of course, but <laughs> yeah. How young I mean, for the end. For the anthology um, contest, we tend to, our, our Louder Than a Bomb program starts at middle school, but we haven't really said if, if a second grader sends us an amazing poem, they got a chance. <laughs> uh, but uh, the Youth Poet Laureate is different. Gina knows more on that. Yeah, the Youth Poet Laureate is firmly 13 to 19, um, just really in part because of the responsibilities of serving and transporting young people and wanting to do that in an ethical way. Um, Traveling yeah. around the state for all of the events and things, yeah, I can see it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> um, 
so yeah, the other programs are middle schools and high schools. Um, and you know, it, it, they're less age dependent in that sense of like, you could be 11 and in middle school, if you're in middle school, you're good to submit. Yeah. Um, the yeah. the is a little bit different on its age parameters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sense. All right. Um, and then the video contest. This would kind of hope possibly be like the uh, the best the rep the rep um, replacement for the actual in person event of being able to read their poetry. Yeah. And this way, audiences get to see the students um, deliver their poems because it's it, um, it can be so much more than someone hiding behind a piece of paper kind of mumbling um it's it's really can be a performance in some aspects um but ultimately you know when you hear a poem live you have one chance to understand what the poet's saying um and so the poet has to help you a little bit with how they phrase things, how they use their face, their hands, and it just helps the audience and so this is a great way to see these poets. Um, who've worked on the delivery of their poems, uh, deliver the poems for us. Um, and so the video, there's a, the main competition for the video contest is send us a poem. Uh, then there's a creative competition where they can be a little bit, do a little bit more with, uh, you know, in the main competition, we want to make it equitable for everyone. So no fancy backgrounds, no special effects. Uh, creative content competition, we open it up a little bit more. Um, and then there's also a group uh, competition for more than one person who's written and choreographed and are delivering the poem in however they can do it. Um, like in that, the past, that picture that's on the front when you first go to the website of that group of um, yes. the team there. Because for Louder Than a Bomb, a big part of the live competition aspect was there was a group poem round uh, at the end of the mat, uh, of the, the competition in the night. So there'd be four students from a team on stage with a poem that they'd all written and choreographed together, um, de you know, delivering it, which is a lot of fun and it's a different way to experience a poem. And so we're happy to keep that um we weren't going to have a group competition for the video contests um just with all the limitations of covid and all but the students in the schools um really asked for it and pushed for it so it's like all right you figure it out do it safely and uh, we'll make it part of the competition I've seen they can I've seen other um uh, artistic things done over this past year with like this where we've got our three camera views everybody in their own place, but you just put that all together into one video with everyone's uh, camera views together, choreographed with each other. Yeah, and, and the students, you know, they're in the classroom together um, and everything's done with a teacher supervising. So it's like, all right, do what you can. Mm -hmm. We'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. It's fine. Um, yeah, but I, I think, can, I want I wanted to read one of the student poems from this year's anthology um, just to give an example of some of some of the work uh, that students put out. So this, this is a poem from an Omaha Central student named Isabella Manhart. It's called Ode to the Boxes I Don't Fit In Anymore. When I was small, I came to the conclusion that everything came in a box. I used to fit in a box. The new refrigerator arrived on our doorstep and I did not care about the contents. After all, the box was the best part. I built a cardboard castle in the driveway, boxes all stacked up and taped together. I couldn't read the labels, so I painted over them. I cut holes in the side, turning the boxes into big rooms with beautiful views. And I played pretend. I was the princess and the boxes were my castle. I used to love boxes, but today when I see the box arrive on our doorstep to replace some appliance, and it looks much less like a castle than I remember. And when everything is unpacked, I don't run to grab paint brushes. I don't cut holes in the sides. I can read the labels. Fragile, this side up, boy, girl, straight, gay, black, white, 
Everything comes in a box, categorized and compartmentalized. But I'm beginning to think I don't fit mine. I feel out of place. Everyone else seems content on being containable, living inside the boxes and binaries, but we aren't building cardboard castles anymore. The boxes are bunkers, dark and windowless and small. Stay inside and spare your life. Cram your limbs inside alongside lopsided identities. All the pretending was practice. We all pretend to be something we're not. Today, I was thinking outside of this box when I saw myself for the first time. I am done with pretending. I tear the boxes to shreds and turn their pulp into paper. I rip up the labels and rearrange the letters into the shape of everything I am and everything I will ever be. I am not meant to be fragile. Do not place this side up. I am not a boy or a girl, not straight or gay. There is gray area in between the black and white. And I am pulling out my paintbrushes and filling it with color. Not everything comes in a box. I am not content with being containable. I will not live beneath a label. I will no longer pretend to be someone I'm not. I no longer live inside this box. Again, Isabella Manhart, Omaha Central, Ode to the Boxes I Don't Fit In Anymore. That was just yeah. very powerful, yeah. Yeah, and this is, this is what we've come to expect from these students. Uh, really beautiful poems, um, fantastically put together. Um, yeah, these are, they're and great know, writers. And I know they, um, of course, speak to each other, speak to the other youth, as um, but something like that would um, speak to anybody. I mean, I think I don't, um, age is not relevant to um, the topic and the content of that. Um, all of us can identify with what she was um, talking about. Yeah. yeah, to be in high school and have a poem that is a celebration of self. I just, mm -hmm. I, as a high school, former high school girl, um, I don't know, Who's teaching that? I don't know in what classroom you can necessarily go and find that course, you know? Um, so that to me, especially in this year, is just really, really proof that what we're doing is so important to these students, mm -hmm. so matters. Um, yeah, I mean, it's one of the reasons I think I survived high school was to be able to learn how to appreciate um, my own voice, the sound of my own voice. Um, mm -hmm. And that's just something that we don't really teach. We don't really teach. Period. Yeah. Period at the end of that sentence. Being a high school teen um, is hard enough as it is without what we've had to go through in the last year. And yeah, I remember as well. I, I did not know who I was. Um, it was a whole lot of unknown <laughs> and and uh, not terror, but just uh, flailing around wondering what am I going to end up as and what do I do with what I'm doing here and having something to be able to grasp onto and when things are so crazy now is good and i think though to teens children they are very um uh flexible and um they they struggle but they will adapt very easily as well so i think um just making the changes that you guys have done to the, the programs is definitely something they'll be able to i hope they're having no problem jumping into like like I said, we're, we're meeting in school anyways, sometimes in person, sometimes virtually. Um, we wanna keep doing this and being involved in this as well. So we will adjust and adapt and uh, keep writing. Yeah. And, and I also just wanna throw in too that um, we appreciate um, this venue today and this audience especially. We're helping students work on their expression it's the libraries and the librarians who are helping guide these students to find the examples they need to kind of, um, uh, you know, uh, develop their voices. Um, it's finding the stories, finding the poems, your suggestions, everything you do for students and adults, um, especially this past year, um, is, is immense. So uh, thank you all.
Yeah, in the public libraries and especially in the middle and, and high school libraries too. I'm yeah. hoping some of, I mean, kind of traditionally I was mentioning summer reading and um, story times that public libraries do, but the school libraries, I think definitely yeah. need to be involved in this and because they're where the kids are and, and where they are working on this in their classrooms and then they can link to, here's what we can do for you. And um, the school libraries can host something potentially, um, depending on what, you know, how they're open during the summers or not. Um, yeah so in past years a few of our louder than a bomb sponsors they're usually teachers usually english teachers um but in a, a few times it's been the school librarian who's been our sponsor so that we can go in because uh, we need a staff member presence uh, sure. to work with students and uh, so we've had great help from the librarians too absolutely awesome i'm a I, fan um... <laughs> oh, no. we're and we're a fan of you too yes <laughs> the, uh, books reading writing um it's all uh mutual definitely i think school libraries yeah. public libraries and hopefully when some of these um teens go to college they will continue with it and um reach out to their university and college librarians with you know we i've been working on this i'd like to keep going and what can you do for me which I think that's that's why I'm, I'm glad to have you guys on here because like I said at the beginning here at the library commission we're not just any type of library anyone you know we serve anybody so anyone could possibly be watching the show today or watch our recording of this later and hopefully decide to um, reach out to you guys and, and become involved Thank you. All right, let's see um if anybody has any more questions um i've grabbed a couple here that i've asked um definitely type into the question section and let us know if you want to know more about any of this or is there anything you've done at your libraries that um maybe uh other people could uh follow i'm not sure if, uh, that's a wonder from from you guys gene and matt have you um previously done events with the public libraries anywhere um yeah we actually have done a lot especially with omaha public libraries mm -hmm. um We've done a, a monthly series through part of the school year in past years. Um, we've done occasional readings um, with them. Um, but the, the monthly series was a writing workshop for youth um, that we would run at libraries. So, yeah. And then as, uh, as state poet, I've done a lot of work with libraries all over the state um, coming in to do readings. And I look forward Boy, do I look forward to doing that again, starting <laughs> soon, I hope. Uh. <laughs> oh, it sounds like things are um, hopefully heading towards um, yeah. the good um, and the, very soon. So keep our fingers yeah. crossed, keep being safe. And, Definitely. Um, we'll get to see you in person in some of the libraries. <laughs> yeah. So, um, we do have a question about um, the specific section because I'm showing this here. Uh, this is the anthology, and I see this is the screenshot of the previous one, I guess, the previous years, well, or a previous yes. year. Um, how can, I'm looking here, how can people purchase copies of the anthology once it is um, published? Someone wants to know. Um, mostly they have to just contact us through our website and we'll get them to them. Um, with our new communications director, we hope to make buying things off our website easier. Um, we're not quite there yet, but okay. um, we are getting closer. And also at the there's a bookstore in Omaha, The Bookworm at, at 90th and Center. Um, they have uh, copies of uh, previous anthologies for sale. So. And so this one will be, I think you say you've been doing it for five years. This will be the yes. sixth one coming up. I'm trying to make yes. sure I know how many there were. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, hey, great. You might be hearing from people then because they were wondering about how we, you know, read all the previous submissions. Yeah. Um, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> They've been fun and, to put together. Yeah. And the artwork on here, I like that too. I assume that's yeah. some youth or teen artists you're using as the for the covers or do you know it is we we get student artwork uh the pa the past the first couple years it was just poems um and then uh we it was recommended like uh one of our donors actually said uh, hey you know w what about like artists from kent bellows studio and it's like what a great idea so we've been using artwork 
uh, from Kent Bellows students where some years uh, just they'll submit some things and we'll see if they fit. And this year's and last year's, we actually sent them the poems first. It lengthens the whole process, but we sent them the poems and they did artwork based on um, some of the poems. And that last, that the poem I read by Isabella Manhart, she is also a visual, a visual artist. Um, so she also has a piece of art that goes with her, her piece. Nice, I see that, um, yeah. Yeah, so she's not a Kent Bellows student, uh, but she is, and this was actually another, uh, not uh, one of the poets uh, did the cover. So. So then the artwork actually now relates to the poems that you might read inside in the anthology itself, yeah. Yep, yeah, which is just kind of neat. And it's <clears throat> neat to work with the students at Camp Bellows too, because they're, you know, we, we'll talk all day about the talent of youth poets, but um, talk to them about the talent of youth artists. And it's, it's pretty amazing because the work they send to um, is always fantastic. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that's the thing, you know, we're in Nebraska and we always, uh, I think if you, especially if you grew up here, you're like, yeah, the arts are good here, but man, I wish I was in LA or New York or Chicago. Um, but, you know, nothing against those other cities, but just the talent of artists, both adult and youth here is just incredible. Um, absolutely incredible. Um, the the poets uh, especially because uh, I've been around the country with poetry. I've been to national poetry slam competitions, and uh, I'm just always wondering what is in the water here um, as far as just being able to write beautiful, meaningful poetry. Uh, there's so much of it here. It's it's a real. It's a real pleasure to be here and honor to be the state poet of Nebraska, since I really feel so highly about the poets here. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of, there's so much here in Nebraska to write about. I mean, people, uh, yeah. I don't even want to say that whole flyover thing, <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's, yeah. Come here, you'd be surprised, definitely. Definitely. A little bit of everything. Yeah. A lot of weather. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to get into where we were a couple of weeks ago and where's where we are today and this week. It's it's two extremes and I'm happier in this current extreme coming up. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> um, all right. So uh someone's interested in um that they hadn't seen heard about this before, the um the louder than a bomb um events. The, you know the actual you know previous ones here um is there anywhere that anyone can view those were there any of those recorded or, or or anything like that they are all recorded um we've got a let me verify the youtube channel but we've got a youtube channel um mm -hmm. and every year we put up uh almost every single poem um nice. by the students and so it's all individually but there are some uh playlists of like the finals nights and those those are well worth checking out um so if you go to the link to facebook instagram and twitter but i don't see a youtube if you go to youtube.com the channel is louder than a bomb great plains all one word so youtube.com slash louder than a bomb great plains um will take you to our youtube channel and it's got a list of all the videos, the playlists. Um, and that's primarily with the youth okay, poets. Look, We've got it down here. Yeah. yeah. Or if you go to louder than a, if you go to YouTube and search for louder than a bomb, it'll come up. And also, if you go to YouTube and search for Nebraska Writers Collective, you'll come up with a lot of the workshops we did last summer. Uh, where we yeah. had poets leading writing workshops. So great wow programming bomb. for most things. Yeah, here's a lot of from Great Plains. Then here you can see it's under Nebraska Writers Collective where you can pop over to that particular YouTube channel. Yeah. Yeah. 
And so these are all, it's like, yep, the most recent ones from last year, previous years, perfect. Yeah. Yeah, it's all there. It's a, um, we're hoping to get it streamlined, but our, our poor new communications director is overwhelmed by everything we're asking of her, but at some point, <laughs> this will be easier. <laughs> It's you know, being a victim of your success. Enjoy it. <laughs> Try to. Yeah, that has been the whole story of Louder Than a Bomb. You know, when we started it, we were hope. Yeah, you know, ten years ago, we we're like, well, it'd be cool if we could get like four or five schools, and we ended up working with thirteen schools. Twelve were in the competition, wow. and you know, before you do something like that, you worry too. It's like, well, is this going to be as good as it? It existed in Chicago at that point. Um, and, you know, I'd been to Chicago to see some of the events as we got prepared. And it's like, you come back, it's like, well, I hope we're as, anywhere near as good a show as that. And I thought we were, you know, we we're better, of course. I, I might be biased. Um, <laughs> but especially that first year was exciting, you know, that it's put together in the form of a competition, but the schools competing against each school they're cheering for their students but they're also cheering for the competitors if a mm -hmm. if a young poet goes up on stage and does a beautiful poem you know the other three teams aren't booing uh they are cheering and hugging them as they leave the stage and things like that and just you know it, the competition itself makes it more palatable for audiences more exciting um and it was fun too that first year um as gita you might recall um the finals night had four amazing teams competing and it all came down to by the scores the smallest a team could win by is one tenth of a point gina's team won by a tenth of a point um wow. nail biter <laughs> yeah I was like, we were up against some really good competition. So when Matt, I remember this so vividly, Matt as the host was like the winner by a 10th of a point. I like hung my head. I was like, oh, we did so good. It <laughs> wasn't like, I knew how good those other poets were. And it was like, you just make peace with it. I mean, who's going to be mad about somebody being a good poet? <laughs> it's, it's so cool to see. And the students, I mean, they're friends in their teams, but they're friends across teams. Um, and you just see those relationships play out long term. It's it's amazing. It's a good and it's a good, you know, um, competition and sportsmanship. That is how it should be, yeah. not competition. And I hate you. It's we are all good at this. That's why we're all here. I'm I'm for you and I'm for me. But and I can be both. And I can be a good 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 sport about the whole thing. And hopefully that carries over into other areas of their life. They're definitely a very good example. Yeah. All right. We are almost getting to the top of the hour again here. Anybody have any last minute desperate questions you want to ask of Matt or Gina? Um, get them in. I know we answered a lot of questions and a lot of good conversation here. I'm so glad I was able to have you guys on here on the show this morning. Um, yeah, thanks for having us. Talk about this. Like I said, I've been following Louder in the Bomb for years and um, I know we push out information about it from the Library Commission and things, make sure people know, but it's always good to have chat just about this. <laughs> and with all the new programs that you're doing this year, ad adapting and adjusting to our current situation. Um, and I, I know some things like this that people or libraries are doing, like their uh, story times online and you know outside programming and things are um, going to continue that they became such um so many people who are unable to get to the library for story time with their kids are saying this is awesome i can actually participate and log in with my child because i just can't get out of the house to bring them there um they're going to continue it's not just a only while this is happening so potentially video contests could be something that i'm not going to get on you guys to do this but <laughs> um could be a, a regular thing if that's something you can do in addition to um whenever we get to do things in person again yeah, well, that's the kind of thing we're figuring out what to carry forward. Um, it is, yeah, you got to see what can you do new in addition to what you've already been doing. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, well, it doesn't look like anybody has anything else they wanted to ask, um, but definitely uh, reach out, um, all you librarians to from school, public, whatever, reach out to the Writers Collective, um, get the submissions in for the anthology and the video contest, and of course, the brand new um, Nebraska Youth Poet Laureate. I think that's the one I'm mostly excited about, but that's just me personally. <laughs> Um, and hopefully we'll get some uh, great um, submissions and great some more youth, more um, youth poets out there for people to hear. Definitely. All right. Anything else you guys want to say, Gina and Matt? Well, before we wrap up. Jamie, thank you for having us with us, uh, um, with you, and uh, thank you everybody for watching. Uh, yeah. Again, go libraries. Thank you for all you do. <laughs> thank you. And maybe um, a year down the road, we'll be able to check in again and see how things went and um, see what's uh, what comes up for in next year for the Writers Collective. Yeah, and we'd love to come back with the first Nebraska Youth Poet Laureate at some point. So. We need to do that. I'm going to write that down. I'm going to call you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we have you on when you when, you know, we always done whenever the, the Nebraska State Poet comes on, we always bring them onto the show to just talk about. So we definitely would want to do that for our youth poet as well. So we will get that scheduled. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. I think we'll wrap it up for today. Um, so get signed up here, sign up to attend the events. Um, I see you got the two events on the 15th and the 29th for the, the um, 15th for the video and anthology contest and then the 29th um so this one form will sign you up for both of those events correct yeah yeah yes for the announcement of the youth poet laureate for nebraska all right i am going to go back to my encompass live page and if you uh, google or use your search engine of choice and just type in encompass live as you can see we're the only thing that comes up yay nobody else is allowed to use their our name <laughs> it's not copyrighted but yeah um so today's show has been recorded and will be here on our archive pages. These are upcoming shows and I'll let you know right now, I'm in the midst of getting next week's show scheduled. So look for our, onto our schedule here in just this afternoon, I'll have it up there. Um, I can tell you it is going to be about high tech makerspace goodness um, with our technology innovation librarian, um, Amanda Sweet. So. Look for the description and sign up for that for next week's show um, but our archives are right here the most recent ones at the top of the list today's show will be posted up here by the end of the day tomorrow should have it all done um we'll have a link to the youtube video and a link to all of these links that we've got here on the website and everything um, everyone who attended today and registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know when it's available um and ready to watch and I'll sh while we're here i'll show you we do have a search feature here for our, our show archives you can search the full archives or just, just the most recent 12 months um this is because this is the full archives of encompass live and i'm not going to scroll all the way to the bottom because that'll be too much um but encompass live premiered in january 2009 so over 10 years of our show archives are here on the page um we're librarians, we archive things for historical purposes, and we'll keep putting them, um, having them up here as long as we have somewhere to host them. All of these are on our YouTube. But some of the information on these shows may become outdated, of course, because it's so old. Some products and services may no longer exist anymore, or they may have changed totally. Links might not work anymore, information may change. So just pay attention to the original broadcast date because um, so you know when this information was actually put out there so you can realize you know, some things do stand the test of time you know reading lists things like that um, but some things will become outdated just pay attention when you are looking through our archives but we will keep them up there as long as there's somewhere for them to be hosted um, we also do have a Facebook page for Encompass Lives so if you like to use Facebook you can give us a like over there there it is um, I'm gonna switch this over to yeah and um, we post on there whenever anything is, um, here's a reminder to log in today's show, information about our upcoming shows, our presenters and everything. So you can um, give us a like there. We also post onto Twitter. We use the NCUMP Live hashtag as a little abbreviation. Um, Twitter, Instagram, wherever our um, um, communications people post things to. <laughs> um, so keep an eye on there as well for any announcements for what we're doing. Uh, so other than that, that wraps up for today's show. Thank you everybody for being with us this morning. Thank you, Matt and Gina. This was great. I was so glad to have you on and talk about poets and hopefully you'll be hearing from lots of libraries soon.
Hope so. And I will see you on everyone attendees on a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye.